Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today, our topic is health screenings for digestive problems. This is a review of some lab tests that are available for people to use to assess digestive problems. There are often digestive problems that people can discover through simple things like monitoring their symptoms and timing when their symptoms come based on how long they take after eating certain foods and where in the body they occur. They can also be assessed through physical examination. For example, when we examine the abdomen, we can figure out where gas is formed or where there's pain or where there's lumpiness or where there's in undigested fecal matter. So this particular topic is about lab tests. The topic first begins with blood work and then we go on to look at stool, urine testing, and hair testing because those are things that can be, all be done in a holistic practice to understand what's going on with the digestion. Now, some of you may be concerned that we didn't talk about direct diagnosis. And I think that in alternative medicine, it's really important to pay homage to the fact that alternative practitioners tend to look, at least the science-based ones, tend to look toward causation and ultimate root cause of a real problem instead of just diagnosing a, a symptom or diagnosing a code or diagnosing a disease that is a pathology. There are plenty of complaints that a person may have that don't rise to the level of a diagnostic code and they may not be considered medically necessary. So one of the things I want to mention is, if you've got a symptom and you think it's necessary to take care of it and your insurance company doesn't, you might need to fire your insurance company or at least pay cash. So as we look at blood, blood is the first thing that we test when we do lab tests because blood is kind of the overall way of screening for pathology and making sure that there isn't something really wrong with a person because we want to rule out those kinds of things. It'd be nice to make sure that we don't have something very easy to find and very devastating for a person like an anemia or like an infection or some other very obvious medical problem. So we do that through blood screening. So that's a pretty standard CBC. So when you do a complete blood count or a biochemistry profile, you look at some things. And among those things are, are things like chloride and CO2. And these will give us an idea of how your stomach acid is doing and how your bile might be. We'll also be looking at creatinine and bilirubin. We'll be looking at bun, uh, bun or blood urea nitrogen and creatine phosphokinase. So I know that's a, a word salad of a lot of things, but those are things that are on nearly everybody's standard blood test. And they tell us an idea about how your liver and pancreas and gallbladder are working and how your bile is working. That's very useful for us to understand that. And then they expand into the kidneys and, and look at the kidneys. So, some of them examine the kidneys a little bit more. So You'll also see some enzymes that'll be on the lab tests, the, the chemistry profile, which is AST and ALT and GGT. These are enzymes that are found in the liver mostly, but they can be found in, in other tissues too. And they're elevated when there's a problem. Usually they're elevated just a little bit when there's a little bit of toxicity or sluggishness in the liver. And if it's more than twice normal, then we look at them as kind of a problem. The GGT tells us a lot about the gallbladder's function and the common bile duct. And that tells us uh, that we have to pay attention to bile support, which is a really big theme of, of holistic work is bile support. We also look at reticulocyte count and red blood cell count and try to see if the person is dehydrated. I'm broadcasting from Denver today, and so the, the problem that we have in Denver is it's a desert, and so it's very dry, and there's a lot of dehydrated people. And so one of the hallmarks of dehydration is going to be apparently high red blood cell count, and that, that's because of people just don't have enough water to dilute their red cells. There's also the reticulocyte count, which is a, a count of cells that are early developing red blood cells, and they show up when there's minor bleeding somewhere that's hidden, like maybe the stomach is bleeding with an ulcer, or the intestine has a, a problem where the intestine is bleeding. Most, intestines, most ulcers are in the small intestine anyway, the first part of the, of the small intestine, not the stomach. There may even be ulcerative colitis or other types of problems where there's bleeding from the large intestine or there could be you know, problems with the person who has extra long periods and they're bleeding excessively during their menstrual period. And so they might make more reticulocytes and other, other types of cells. So your alternative doctor looks at those things. When they look at your blood, they may also screen you for a, a pancreatic problem, which would be pancreatic lipase and pancreatic amylase. Those are enzymes that would help understand if there's a problem with the, the, the pancreas, like acute pancreatitis. And those, those would be elevated. 
when we look at other tests for blood sugar problems, we would look at hemoglobin A1c and we would look at uh, LDH. LDH is lactate dehydrogenase, and that one often is below 140, which is a common sign of someone who might have some flagging low blood sugar. It means once in a while they've got low blood sugar events and they can't manufacture this enzyme because they simply don't have enough sugar to do it. So we sometimes see that. We see a lot of times in our, our carnivores and our ketogenic patients that are doing low carb, they'll have high LDL, normal HDL, and normal triglycerides. And so high LDL by itself is not a risk factor by itself. There has to be other problems like, you know, valvular problems, placking, high calcium score, previous heart attacks. There's all kinds of reasons for that. We look at total cholesterol and we look at fasting glucose and insulin. That's very useful to find out how a person is handling their sugar. It's not uncommon for a person to have low blood sugar and high blood sugar episodes in the same day. And so we might see high hemoglobin A1c and yet low LDH. And that might tell us that a person is having low blood sugar episodes and then high blood sugar episodes and then low blood sugar episodes. And that's called reactive hypoglycemia. We can move on to uh, urine testing and urine testing is pretty useful. There are a bunch of urine tests that are available to look at digestive problems and tell you if your problem is in your dysbiosis, which would be, dysbiosis would be in your bacteria. You've got bacteria and viruses and fungi and, and uh, all kinds of things that are supposed to live in your gut normally. And so dysbiosis is detected really well through an organic acid test. The organic acid test would measure the waste products of those bugs that live in your gut and would tell you what the proportion of them is and if you've got too many of one kind and too little of another kind and help you balance that and help you decide what diet might be working. Because ultimately, whatever diet you choose, your labs should improve if you're doing it right. Because my goal is to improve the labs and to improve the symptoms and to improve the whole person altogether. We don't want to just treat a lab test, we want to treat the person. And we don't want to just apply a diet that we have loyalty to instead of understanding that that diet might need to be modified. I frequently use carnivore-ish diets that are not strict carnivore. And I frequently use very modified ketogenic diets. I sometimes use highly modified ketogenic vegan diets for my vegans and for my vegetarians. So you've got to be flexible as a clinician and, and as a patient and realize that you, you don't want to stick to just one school of thought because it seems really cool. You want to use science and observation to see if it fits for you. So don't get trapped in that stuff you'll see online with all the YouTubers that are arguing over, over the purity of one philosophy versus another philosophy. I throw all that out the window when I'm looking at an individual because an individual is just that. They're a unique individual and they need things tweaked for themselves. So no two carnivore diets are going to be the same for my patients. So we can look at oxalates which are in urine and those will tell us about a lot of painful conditions that form crystals in the body. We can look at phosphates which tell us about the mineral status of the body. We look at detox enzymes and, and detox molecules like glutathione that tell us if our livers can detoxify. And we look at ketones that tell us if we're burning ketones adequately. We can look at B vitamins and find out if we're deficient in B vitamins, which can affect our digestive tract quite a bit, whether we can absorb B12 and whether we can use it. This is very useful, these tests, all of these tests together, to help us understand whether the problem is in the liver or the kidneys or the pancreas or, or the stomach or the bile itself or, or whether it's in the small or large intestine. And that coupled with a good physical exam helps us localize which organ is the biggest problem. We also do hair tests to look for mineral imbalances where a person is excreting too much or too little minerals in their hair, and also heavy metals. People can either really store heavy metals in their body and they don't release them very well, which is more rare, or they can have a whole load of heavy metals that are in their hair, which shows that they're trying to purge them over time and that they may have a chronic heavy metal toxicity. There is a, a couple more tests that are in, in the stool. We do a, a couple of stool tests, and the stool tests are occult blood where we look for hidden blood in the stool. We look for fecal fat, which is fat in the stool that doesn't get absorbed by the small intestine. And that can often tell us that either the bile is insufficient or the small intestine has been degraded by something like celiac disease. And the villi inside there, the little, the little projections, the little finger-like projections inside the small intestine are not absorbing the fat from your food because they're damaged. Another test we do is a couple of them that are for the, the pancreas, for chronic pancreatitis called fecal chymotrypsin, and fecal pancreatic elastase. So those are the, the stool tests. So this is a, a quick review of some of the many tests and kind of a little bit of an introduction about what they point to 